two reasons why I want to get this diff brace installed. Number one, doing burnouts at the track and stuff like that and just hooking with high RPM launches on a really sticky surface with really sticky tires. Part of me just doesn't want to take the chance to explode my diff. I was talking with another 392 owner at the track and he also has a six-speed manual and he blew up his diff two years ago at the track trying to launch his car hard just on street tires let alone like drag radios like I have so I mean that was kind of eye-opening um, the six speeds are pretty robust but man you wouldn't want to blow up your diff so that that's one reason uh, just a little bit of extra extra protection because I take my car to the track and race fairly often uh, the second reason is because when my car is at low speed, really low speed, a lot of times it feels like it's kind of surging and clunking. And I'm going to see if I might not be able to get it to do it right now, but sometimes if I keep it in gear and just back off, all of a sudden the car kind of starts bucking. Uh, kind of hard to describe. And you can hear it kind of clunking around. And it just feels like it's kind of hard to describe it's something weird with the drive line I don't know exactly what it is but I figure I could start in one spot stiffen up the differential see if that helps it a little see if some of the clunking at really low speed uh, when I'm just backing off the throttle and it'll start kind of it's hard it's almost like a ripple effect where like it it bucks a little bit and then it gets worse and then it gets worse and then it gets worse especially bad in like parking lots or trying to go really slow in school zones like this. There, just like that. Now I can kind of avoid that by keeping my RPMs up a little bit and it doesn't do it so bad, but yeah, when you get low like that, man, does it ever really start bucking? Uh, it can be very embarrassing because you can hear the clunking outside the car. So I'm not sure exactly what's doing that, um, what part of the drive line, but like I say, we'll start it off with a diff brace because A, it's a little bit of added extra insurance for when we're at the track doing burnouts and launching hard, and then we'll go from there. If that helps it, problem solved. If not, well, we can take a look and see what else we can stiffen up to try to avoid that from happening. I will say though, it does seem to be like a six speed manual only problem when you leave it in a certain gear and you try to back off like that. Sometimes it kind of gets a little just like that. Kind of annoying. You can hear it clunking. So we'll try to resolve that issue. Install this diff brace. It is a high quality product. Well, let's get at it. So for this install, on this style diff, basically, these three bolts are going to come out. This bracket here, you can see how there's this machined part out of the face. These little grooves here where they've machined around, that's going to fit perfectly. See this little mark here? It's going to fit right up there like that. And then this threaded part right here is where that diff brace is going to bolt into from the cross member once we get it bolted into the cross member. So this section is going to brace the diff and then the second piece that attaches the cross member is going to stiffen it to the frame of the car. Pretty simple install. Not much here. Three bolts we got to remove. We got to put a threaded nut up here so we can bolt the second part to the frame and then just bolt the two together. Fairly straightforward. Two. 
Uh, the kit comes with a little bit of Loctite, so we're going to put a couple dabs on these three new bolts, which are a little bit longer than the old ones, obviously to accommodate the brace. on this one and oh man barely get that in there thank god for swivels threaded insert has got to go into this hole. And just like so. We have this part. We have this little rubber piece that we're going to put where it's going to contact the frame which is going to be the inside of here. This rubber part is going to line up like that. And that's just going to stop squeaking and annoying vibration and rubbing on the frame. And then our bolt here is going to go up there into the threaded insert that we just placed. Like I say, guys, pretty simple. So just like before, we're going to place just a little bit of Loctite on this guy. And you only really need to put Loctite on one side of the bolt because as you thread it in, it gets all in the threads. Thread that through like that. It's gonna sit where that's gotta sit. Let's make sure that it fits where it's gotta fit here. Honestly guys, just super super gentle to get that guy to go. The more gentle you are, the easier that is to thread in. If you try to force and push that up, then you keep popping it out of the way. Just super super gentle, just to get it started, and then it'll thread right in. Okay, so there we go. So there's the second part. Now we're going to put a bolt right through here, which is going to bolt our first part that we put up to our second part, which is going to stiffen our diff itself to the frame. And that should give us a little bit of extra stability, a little bit of insurance at the track. Okay, so now what we have left is this bolt and this thick washer. Washer obviously goes there, bolt, this guy threads in. But before we start that, we're going to do the same thing and apply some of that blue Loctite, which they have so generously supplied us. Okay, so half the battle is trying to get this guy This guy lined up with this guy. Sometimes you might 
have to loosen this a little, loosen this a little just so we can get them kind of totally lined up so that bolt can start threading. Once the bolt threads in, then you can start tightening everything up because it's going to slot in where it's supposed to go. But it might take a little bit of persuading just to get that adjustment right. Oops. That is going the right way. Okay, let's see here. Get this guy started. Now we're talking. Okay, now before I tighten everything down like crazy, get this guy, tighten him back up to the frame, right, like we had before. Oh. The spec they have for these three bolts going into the side of the diff is 32 foot-pounds. Hopefully I can fit my torque wrench in there. There's not a lot of space. All right. Okay. And just make sure that, that stays. There we go. I got thirty two. Now this bolt, they say it has to be torqued to 45 foot-pounds. Okay, that's 45. And lastly, this guy gets torqued to 75. Now, can I fit my torque wrench in here? Maybe. Not a lot of room. There we go. She's complete. Pretty smooth looking diff brace, guys. All in all, really not bad for a half hour's work, to be honest with you. So, only thing left. Let's go test it out, see how she works. All right, guys, so now with the performance development diff brace installed on the Challenger, let's fire her up, take her for a bit of a test run and see if that rear end feels a little bit different. I'm actually super curious, so let's get into it. The heat. Then. Cold start. Now, I know a lot of guys love doing the cold starts, to be honest. Once I got this cam, uh, I like the warm starts because that's when the cam really starts to lump along. Not like it's a super lumpy cam, but that's where it sounds the best. Love it. Absolutely love it. So let's do our test through the school zone and see if it's somewhat smooth. Then we'll try a couple hard launches. My hard launch has always felt pretty good, but I'm just curious if I can feel a difference, if the, if the rear end feels a little tighter. The big thing with this mod is at the track for sure. You're just trying not to blow up your diff on a hard launch on a sticky surface with sticky tires. Just try to stop that thing from exploding. down she really goes it never gets old it never ever gets old and ladies and gentlemen just so long as everything goes to plan and we don't get shut down at the dyno 
as we've had to reschedule already once, twice actually with the setback, which is frustrating. We will be at the dyno tomorrow morning and I am super, super excited because then we'll get this thing really sorted and we could have this car exactly where we want to have it by tomorrow afternoon. It's been a little bit of a journey, a little bit of trial and error, but uh, be excited. Here we go. Feels solid as always. So I'm gonna take it for a little bit of a lap here. I got a little bit of space, so I'm gonna let these guys get ahead a little bit, and then I'm gonna crank on her real good, and we'll see how she goes. Here we go. I mean, it feels nice and planted. It feels pretty good. With the cradle bushings though, like right off the start, it already felt pretty good. So just a little bit extra. I mean, you can't, can't go wrong with that. To get the full impressions of this test, we're gonna have to take it to the track see if I can I, I have a feeling where I'm gonna notice it the most is when I'm trying to do a burnout in the water box I have a feeling that's going to keep the car nice and planted the rear end a little bit more settled because it would get a little bit jittery if I let my rpms drop down just a little bit too low when I'm doing my burnout and then I don't know launching I mean this car has launched like a dream since I put the Nitto Tri 5 R's on it, the drag radials, and uh, the wider wider wheels on it with the cradle bushings. Those three things have eliminated my wheel hop entirely and let me launch as hard as I can, like 3,000 RPM launch is no problem. I'm telling you guys, if you haven't, if you've been thinking about putting a cam in your car, And you're hesitating man oh man just do it it drives and pulls so hard honest to god guys this car is just a freaking blast to drive I've always started out with my goal being man it drives so good it does feel really planted. You know, just giving it 3K pulls. It, I mean, it's super, super planted, guys. Not like it wasn't before, but it just, it feels really solid, I'm not gonna lie. It feels a little bit more connected. I'm gonna give it a couple more jabs right in the sweet spot of the power band like that. Let's throw it in first gear. Right around three. She pulls pretty good. Well, there you have it, guys. To get full impressions of this modification, I'm definitely gonna have to head to the track, try a couple really hard launches and a couple burnouts in the water box for it to really, really tell me that there's a big difference, but right off the hop, it, it definitely does seem to be a bit more connected and a bit more solid in the rear. I will say that. And if anything, just the insurance that I'm not gonna explode my differential all over the place when I'm at the track and I'm launching really hard, I mean, that that in itself is, is priceless. It, that's money well spent because for as high quality product as the performance development differential brace is, it's relatively inexpensive, guys. Like, it does not cost you a lot of cash. I, and really for the half hour install time that it took me, like it honestly took me 
maybe not quite that much, but I was going to say it, it, it almost took me just as long to jack up the car and put it on jack stands than it did to get in there and install the brace. Like it's really not much work, super straightforward. Uh, I don't think you can go wrong. If you're launching your car hard around town or at the track, and if you have a Challenger with a Hemi, I mean, let's face it, we know you are, it's definitely worth getting this brace. It is definitely worth it. All right, guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for tuning in, and uh, we'll catch you later. Cheers.